Shades. Let's get into it. Uh, where do I begin? Being in the skin, feeling like tabernacles. It could get intense. Treated like a sin. It could get me lynched, even as a prince. It could get me pinched, but we don't even flinch. Nah, not even an inch. Cause God up in the heavens and a nigga look like him. But they took his image and they put it through the rinse. Made it look like them. Made it look like everything I grew up knowing was incorrect. They never said that I was ugly, but it's indirect. I used to get offended looking at my different flesh. But I bask in the sun now, it's limitless. For real, it took a while to get through to me too. Made from the same earth, we get nutrients through. Formed by the fingers of God, as mud in his cuticles too. Uh, and every shade is a beautiful view. Shades, here's something you need to know. The skin you in is gold, watch it glow. You a seed in the soil, you need to grow. It looks just like me, it gets darker, deeper you go. Just like you, it gets darker, deeper you go. Shades, brilliant tone, radiant surface. Encased in worth and glazed in perfect. The facts is deeper than the epidermis. And every layer still confirms a purpose. Shades, the sun in love with the way that you be. Your insecurities be funding these industries. Energy given to altering your imagery is still be killing me. Never take the word of your enemies over we. Embracing the way you was made, the hell is a flaw. Went from being ashamed to being in awe. Standards have changed, no longer belong. I wish they make it a law to see what we saw. You up for an unskin, uh, it's not a praise. Mixed is not a phrase. Don't forget you a light to the world, a lot of rays. How can you see this wave of truth and be not amazed? Self love is not a phase. Shade is something you need to know. The skin you in is gold, watch it glow. You a seed in the soil, you need to grow. It looks just like me, it gets darker, deeper you go. Deeper that you go. Just like you, it gets darker, deeper you go. Shades. Just like me, it gets darker, deeper you go, deeper that you go, deeper that you go. You don't need no, you a seed and so you, you need to grow. It looks just like you, it gets darker, deeper you go. Shades. Check, check, check. Turn this up just a little bit. Check, 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 check. Check, check. Check, check. I troop jumping through hoops. My jukes is insane. Yeah, I still trip. Miss, I still slip learning not to be idle, but also practice and stillness. Meditate, I regulate. And the Second music is on at the same time. All right, uh, let's do it. Educate back to fulfillment. This is not my rest. Should I rather rest in resilience? Face with opposition. I battle my inner demons. And steady ready, cause you know it's only for a season when dealing with these bad habits. Shalom, 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 Israel, most high in Christ, bless, happy, happy Sabbath prep to all of you Israelites out there that are striving to keep the Lord's law, statutes, and commandments, the Sabbath is upon us, my name is Officer Kaliah, this is four chapters today, we're going to go ahead and get it in from Nehemiah chapter 3 through Nehemiah chapter 6, um, as always, pray you, uh, the family's been following along, 
staying in touch with the history and what's taking place. Uh, Nehemiah goes into a pretty uh, deep history into how the temple was rebuilt. So hopefully y'all been paying attention and got some information, uh, some precepts, and some understanding from the previous readers. We're going to go ahead and send the prayers up. Um, sisters, cover your head. Brothers, uncover your head and face the east. Send the prayers up. Dear Heavenly Father, God of our salvation, save us and gather us together and deliver us from the heathen so that we may give thanks unto thy great name and glory unto thy praise. Blessed be thy holy name in the name of Israel forever. O Heavenly Father, let them be confounded who persecute us, but let not us be confounded. Let our enemies be dismayed, but let not us be dismayed. Bring upon our enemies the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. O Heavenly Father, forgive our fathers for breaking your laws, and please forgive us for breaking your laws. Help us to never bring shame upon thy great name, nor reproach against thy works. For surely we have turned ourselves into thee, O Heavenly Father, striving to be upright. And as we confess our faults, please grant us protection against our faults. Cleanse us of our secret faults, and guide us into the best of morals. For surely our prayers, our sacrifices, our lives, and our deaths are all for thee. We thank you, O Heavenly Father, for bringing us upon another Holy Sabbath, Father. Thank you for the trials, tribulations, and success throughout the week, Father. We ask, Father, that you continue to allow us to endure in this captivity. Make our enemies to be at peace with us, O Father. Bring destruction swiftly and speedily amongst our enemies, O Father, and restore us the kingdom of heaven, Father. We ask, Father, that you will continue to send your holy angels to inculcate the spirit of your Son, Jesus the Christ, within us. Continue to open doors for our leadership as we push this truth throughout the four corners of the earth. Use us as tools and as vessels to do thy work, O Lord, and allow us the understanding that we may be able to go out and teach your people, those who we have called to hear this truth, Father, and repent to keep thy law, statutes, and commandments. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray and ask these things. Amen. All right, Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ. Bless again. My name is Officer Kalaya here in South Carolina. Going to jump right into Nehemiah chapter 3. Um, it's been a long week. Lord's will, y'all have had a, you know, a prosperous week. I'm, I'm tired myself, but you know we ain't going to complain about it. We're just going to serve the Lord with fear and joyfulness and continue to do the work. All right, so this is Nehemiah chapter 3 and verse 1. Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 1. Then, then Eliashab, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests, and they builded the sheep gate. They sanctified it and set up the doors of it, even unto the tower of Mir. They sanctified it unto the tower of Haniel. And next unto them, and next unto him, builded men of Jericho. And next to them, builded Zakur, the son of Emery. But the fish gate did the sons of Hassaniah build it who has laid the beams thereof and set up the doors thereof and locks thereof and bars thereof. So this is Nehemiah going into the rebuilding of the wall. Like I said, hopefully you've been paying attention and you've stayed in touch with what's been going on in the, in the prior history. Uh, Nehemiah has gotten the uh, permission from the king to go, and, to go back to the city. So he's rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Verse 4, And next unto them repaired memory, the son of Urijah, the son of Koaz. And next unto them repaired Meshulon, the son of Berechiah, the son of Meshzabil. And, and next unto him repaired Zadok, the son of Benai. Now, y'all got to bear with us with these names now. There's some, some names in, in a few of these chapters. You know, some officers have been, been catching the devil with them, but uh, we're going to do the best we can, keep it pushing, all right? And next unto them, verse five, and next unto them, the Tekoites repaired, but the no, but their nobles put not the next to the work of their Lord. Moreover, the old gate repaired Jerodiah, the son of Pasiah, and Meshalon, the son of Bersadiah. They laid the beams thereof and set up the doors thereof and the locks thereof and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired 
Meltiah, the Gibeonite, and Jadon, the Mer the Marathonite, and the men of Gibeon and the and Miz of Mizpah, unto the throne of the governor on this side of the river. Next unto him repaired Uziel, the son of Hoshiah, and the goldsmiths. Next unto him repaired Hananiah, the son of the apothecaries, and they fortified Jerusalem unto the bore, unto the broad wall. And next unto them repaired Re Re Rephiah, the son of Hur, the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem. And next unto him, unto them repaired Jedediah, the son of Har Harfrey, even over against his houses. And next unto him repaired Hattush, the son of Hashbaniah. Verse 11, Malchijah, the son of Haram, and Hashbub, and the son of Pathmob, repaired the other piece and the, tower of, and the tower of the furnace. And next unto him repaired Shalom, the son of Halosh, Halosh the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem, and he, he and his daughters. The valley, the valley gate repaired Hanun, the inhabitants of Zanoa. They built it and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof, and a thousand cubits on the wall unto the dung gate. But the dung gate repaired Malachiah, the son of Rechab, the ruler of part of Beth Kar Beth Hakarim. He built it and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. But the gate of the fountain repaired Shalom, the son of Kohoes, the ruler of Mizpah. He built it and covered it and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof, and the wall of the pool of Silo built the king's garden unto, and unto the stairs that go down from the city of David. After him repaired Nehemiah, the son of Azubak, the ruler of the half part of Beth-Huzar, unto the place over against the scepters of David and unto the pool that was made and unto the house of the mighty. After him repaired the Levites, Reum the son of Benai. Next to him repaired Hashbaha, Hashbiah, the ruler of the half part of Keliah in this part, in his part. After him repaired their brethren, Bahavi, the son of Hinnadad, the ruler of the half part of Keliah. And after him repaired Ez Ezer, the son of Je Je the son of Jeshua the ruler of Mizpah, another piece over against the going up of the armory at the turning of the wall. After him, Baruch, the son of, Z of Zabi, earnestly repaired the other piece from the turning of the wall unto the door of the house of Eliashib, the high priest. After him, repaired Miramoth, the son of Urijah, the son of Coles, another piece, from the door of the house of Eliashib, even to the end of the house of Eliashib. And after him repaired the priests, the men of the plain. After him repaired Benjamin and Hashbog over against the house. After him repaired Azariah, the son of the son of Messiah, the son of Ananiah, by his house. And after him repaired Beninu, the son of Heniadad, another piece from the house of Azariah until the turning of the wall, even unto the corner. Peleo, the son of the son of Uzai, over against the turning of the wall and the tower, which layeth out the king's high high house. That was by the court of the prison. After him, Padiah, the son of Porosh. Moreover, the Nith the Nithians dwelt in Ophir until the until the place over against the water gate toward the east and the tower that lieth, that lieth out. After them, the Tekoites repaired another piece over against the great tower that lieth out, even unto the wall of Ophel. From above the horse gate repaired the priest, everyone over against his house. After them repaired Zadok, the son of Emery, over against his house. After him repaired Shemiah, the son of Shechaniah, the keeper of the east gate. After him repaired Hananiah, the son of Shel Shelemiah, 
and Hanun, the sixth son of Zephath, another piece. After him repaired Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, against, over against his chamber. And after him repaired Malachi, Malachi the goldsmith son, unto the, unto the place of the Nithians and of the merchants, over against the gate Mipkad, and to the going up of the corner. And between the going up of the corner unto the sheep gate repaired the goldsmiths and the merchants. So here it gives you a long list of names that are pretty hard to pronounce uh, when you're reading it about the work that each of these houses did uh, in the helping of Nehemiah rebuild the walls in Jerusalem. All right. Uh, chapter four and verse one. Chapter four and verse one. But it came to pass. That when Sambalot heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. So here uh, we got one of the heathens, one of the heathen rulers who are hearing about uh, Nehemiah rebuilding the gates and the work that's going on in Jerusalem. Uh, verse four again, verse one again. But it came to, bad, to pass that when Sambalot heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth. And took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews, what do these feeble Jews, will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? So what is he He's making mockery of the is uh, of was of the work that's taking place in Jer in Jerusalem based on the prior history of the uh the city being destroyed all right and he's making the, he's making this mockery with uh it says right here with his armory and of Samaria calling us weak all right much so like they do today when they make mockery of the men going out uh doing the work uh being in the camp being in one mind and one spirit to do the work of the Lord same thing same heathens same thing now Tobiah the, Ammon, the Ammonite was by him and said, even that which they build is a, is a fox go up. Let me read that again, verse 3. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was, with, was by him, and he said, even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Hear, O God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out. For before thee, for from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. This goes pretty heavy because this is what we do here in Israel United in Christ. We have a mind to do the work. We understand the condition of our people and understand what our mission, what the mission is of going out and rebuilding the minds of our people. So just like Nehemiah was rebuilding the physical temple uh, in this day, we're rebuilding uh, the spiritual temple in this day right now. Verse 7, but it came to pass that when Sambalot, and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped. Then they were very wroth and conspired all of them together and to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. One second, Israel. Apologies. Uh, verse eight, verse seven again. All right, all praises. Apologies, Israel. Verse seven again. But it came to pass that when Sambalot and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ash and the Ashdites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that all the, be the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth. So these heathens are now mad because what they thought was that we would not be able to rebuild the walls. They made mockery of the walls being rebuilt, but now they're hearing that the breaches or 
the weaker places where they thought that the temple would not be able to rebuild or have been made up or which are made up meaning have been rebuilt and or fortified all right verse eight and conspired all of them together to come and fight against jerusalem and to and to hinder it nevertheless we made our prayer unto our god and set a watch against them day and night before because of them so in the building of the temple they had to make a watch for the enemies that they knew would come against the, this work that was being done in jerusalem same thing today verse 10 verse 10 and judah said the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall and our adversary said they shall not know neither see till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease so their whole plan is to cause israel to not to do the work not to get the city rebuilt and it came to pass that when the jews which dwelt by them came they said unto us ten times from all places which ye shall return unto us they will be upon you therefore said i in the lower places beyond behind the wall and on the higher places i even set the people after them after their families with their swords their spears and their bows and i looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people be not afraid of them Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to not that we return all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both the spears, both both the spears and shields and the bows and the and the habergons and the rulers were behind all those of judah so these men are doing the work and they have this they have their swords on them at the same time because they know that our enemies are plotting were plotting against them in the building of the in the rebuilding of the wall uh verse 17 they which build it on the wall and they that bear the burdens with those that laid it, every one with every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. For the builders, every one had his sword girded by his side, and so and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. And I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, the work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall from one from far from another one far from another and what place therefore ye hear the sound of the trumpet resort ye thither unto us our god shall fight for us verse 21 so we labored in the work and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared likewise at the same time said i unto the people let every one with his servant lodge within jerusalem that in the that in the night they might be a guard to us and labor on the day. So neither I nor my brethren nor my servants nor my men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saving that every one put, off, put them off for washing. So they were so serious about being watchful and doing the work of the Lord and not letting the heathens disrupt the work that was being done. They say, look, we ain't even going to change our clothes. All right, we're gonna change. We're only gonna change our clothes when it, if we gotta wash. Other than that, we're gonna build. We're gonna keep our swords on us. We're gonna keep our weapons on us. We're gonna stay watchful. If y'all hear the trumpet on that side, on this side, y'all come and y'all help us on this side. If y'all hear the trumpet on this side, then y'all come on this side and y'all help us. But either way, they were of one mind to get the work done the same way that we are to be today in the resurrection of our people. We have to be of one mind and one spirit. Everybody's moving in the same direction. All right. So that was in the verse four. We're going into verse five. Nehemiah chapter five and verse one. And there was a great cry out of the people and of their wives against their against their brethren, the Jews. For there, for there were they said, for their word they said, we, our sons and our daughters, are many. Therefore, we take up corn for them 
that we may eat and live. So also there were some also there were that said, we have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, and houses that we might buy corn because of the dearth. There were some there were also there were also that said we have borrowed money for the king's tribute and that upon our lands and vineyards yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren our children as their children and lo we bring into bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants and some of our daughters are brought to bondage already neither is it in our power to redeem them for other men have our lands and vineyards and i was very angry when i heard it so nehemiah when he heard these things he heard these these complainings he was mad verse 6 and i was very angry when i heard their cry in their word in these words then i consulted with myself and i rebuked the nobles and rulers and said unto them ye exact usury every one of his brother and i set a great assembly against them and i said unto them we after our ability have redeemed our brethren the jews which were sold to the heathen and ye and will ye even sell your brethren or shall they be sold unto us then held they their peace and found nothing to answer so nehemiah he brought a great multitude before the rulers before the nobles when he when he said this i'm um, we'll go back and read that again and it says in verse seven and i consulted with myself and i rebuked the nobles and the rulers and said unto them ye exact usury every one of his brother and I said a great assembly against, and I said a great assembly against them. So he brought this assembly to them to make a point, saying that you are you you're using your brothers for usury. That's what they were doing. This is this was usury when you're using your brothers for a, a, a greater purpose and and not giving them what what they're what they're owed. Even though we have just come out of captivity, our own brothers were putting our brothers or using our brothers in captivity as well, uh, putting them to work. And he said, as I said unto them, we after our ability have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen, and ye even sell your brethren, or shall they be sold unto us? Then said they, then held they their peace and were found nothing and found nothing to answer. Also, I said, is it not good that ye do? Also, I said, it is not good that ye do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? Likewise, I likewise, and my brethren and my servants might exact them of money and corn, I pray you. Let us leave off this usury. So you're saying, let us, let us not use our brothers, all right? Restore, I pray you, to them even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive yards, and their houses, also the hundredth part of the money, and of the corn, the wine, the oil that exact that ye exact of them. Then said they, We will restore them, and will require nothing of them. So will so will we do as thou sayest. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. Also I shook my lap and said, So God shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not this promise. Even thus be he shaken out and emptied. And all the congregation said, Amen, and praised the Lord. And the people did according to this promise. Moreover, from the time that I, that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah from the 20th year, even until the two and 30th year of Xerxes the king, that is, 12 years, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. But the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people and had taken them bread and wine beside 40 shekels of silver. Yea, even their servants bear rule over the people. But so did but so but so did not I because of the fear of God. Yea, also I continued in the work of this wall. Neither brought we any land and all my servants were gathered thither unto the work. Moreover, there were not at my table a hundred and fifty of the Jews and rulers besides those that came unto the house from among the heathen that were about us, that are about us. Now that which are prepared before me, now that 
which was prepared for me daily, was one ox and six choice sheep. Also fowls were prepared for me, and once in ten days, store of and once in ten days, store of all sorts of wine. Yet for all this required I not the bread of the governor, because the bondage was heavy upon this people. Think upon me, my God, for good. Uh, think upon me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. So Nehemiah, he was about the work. All right, he wasn't about the usury of the people. He was for the people. All right, was when he was governor, he governed for twelve years uh, in Judah, and he was strictly about the work and not using his people. Uh, for usury. So we're at chapter six and verse one. These are pretty short chapters too. Chapter six is very short. Chapter six and verse one. So this is going into the plot of, of the heathens against Nehemiah. Verse one. Now it came to pass when Sambalot and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein though at the time I had not set up the doors upon the gates that Sambalot and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. So Nehemiah wasn't no fool. He knew what was going on. And I sent messages unto them, saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? So Nehemiah, like, I'm, I'm too busy. You know what I mean? He used wisdom. He knew that they were trying to plot to get him in the valley. Why? So that they could put him to death, so that they could kill him and, uh, and ultimately stop the work that was being done for Israel, for the Most High God. So he said, he, he sent the messages down there. He said, look, tell them I'm busy, man. Why should I come and, and, and sit and meet with you and stop doing the work of the Lord? I ain't got time for that. All right? Verse, what I stop at, officer? Verse 4. Yet they sent unto me four times. So they, they sent messages to him four times. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort. And I answered them after the same manner. Then sent Sambalot his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. Wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen and Geshma saith, saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel. For which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mightest, that thou mayest be their king, according to these words. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach at thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou, but thou findest Fainest them out of thine own heart. So then my, he, he said he sent he sent the letter back, saying they ain't, th th this is not what's going on. This is what y'all thinking in your own head. Why? Because the heathens know what power we have when we are in line with our God. When we have our God behind our backs, they know the destruction that can take place when our God is fighting for us. They didn't want that thing. Uh, verse nine. For they all made for for they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it might not be done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Afterward I came unto afterward I came unto the house of Shimeiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Metabel, who was shut up, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple. For they will come to slay thee. Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. And I said, should, and I said, should such a man as I flee? So Nehemiah like, what, what you think I'm finna run? So he said, should such a man as I flee? And who is there that being as I am will go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. So Nehemiah like, I ain't, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. That ain't how I'm rolling. I ain't getting down like that. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me. For Tobiah and Sambalot had hired him. You see that? So this, Tobiah and Sambalot had hired this, 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 this brother to try to get Nehemiah into the temple. Why? To slay him. Nehemiah was not a fool. 
Verse 13. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin and that they might have and that they might have matter for an evil report that they might reproach me. My God, thank thou upon Tobiah and Sambalah according to these their works and on the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets that would have put me in fear. So the wall was finished in the 25th day in the 25th day of the month Elul in the 50 in 50 and two days. So he built the wall in 52 days and it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast. They were much cast down in their own eyes for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. So they knew at that time that the work that, that Nehemiah was doing, it was it was a thing set up by God. It, it, it was it was God's pleasure to have them rebuild the wall and, and to put the enemies out uh, the heathens to shame. Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. For there were many in Judah sworn unto him, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Ariah, and his sons Johanan had taken the daughter of Meshulon, the son of Berechiah. Also they reported his good deeds before me and uttered my words to him. And Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. So Tobiah still trying to send letters to this brother to get him to stop doing the work. Anything that these heathens could do to stop us from doing the work back then, they would they they did. So it is today. Anything that they can do today to stop us from doing the work of the Lord. You got BBC, you got uh the Black Lives Matter, you got all these different campaigns out there that are against the Israelites to stop this work from being done on this side of the world and the coming of our Christ, black the black Messiah. These things are these things that are being done were being done back then are the same things that are being done right now. We just gotta have our spiritual eyes open when we're reading the scriptures in order to see the things that took place in the history of our forefathers and the things that are taking place now. All right. So with that, that's our four chapters of the day. I pray you brothers and sisters have a great Sabbath. Uh, serve the Lord with joyfulness and gladness. All right. And uh, look, Lord's will come Monday. We will pick right back up here at Nehemiah chapter seven. All right. With that, we say Shalom. Most high in Christ bless you all.